Good day, everyone. Welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure.、Uh, for those of you who are new to this channel,、uh, this channel originally was about camping and four wheel driving. But through the process, my wife and I found the fun of、uh, uh, DIY projects, and that is what we are doing now.、Uh, in this particular beautiful weekend,、uh, I'd like to start building the doors of the canopy.、Um, so. As you notice, I've spent、uh, the past two months working on the canopy.、Uh, we started off <clears throat> from the frames, and as a matter of fact, the frames were the easiest part of the canopy.、Um, and things got harder and harder through the process. The panels are ridiculous, and now we are almost heading towards the end of the build.、Uh, so it's sort of like tidying up the the bits and bobs, and all the small things counts. Uh, so <clears throat> through the process,、um, well, I mean, building a canopy is okay, but most、uh, most of the time there is always one question, and that is which things first.、Uh, so now I'm、uh, well, before actually finishing off the roof top,、uh, before putting the guest struts in, I believe、uh, I have to do the doors first.、Uh, Uh, because uh, I will、uh, the the floor is actually not glued in yet, and I will sort of have to think about、uh, how to work on the door seal.、Uh, and obviously, there are different ways to do it, and I have no idea what way is the best.、Uh, and to work on the door seal, I probably have to make the doors first.、Um, so that's why I think I'll 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 do the doors first before finishing off the rooftop.、Um, so the doors, and then we'll use the doors and work on the door seal.、Um, yeah, so I'll be showing you our uh, the uh, well the the brief design of the door,、uh, my thoughts about the door, and I'll show you how to bend some aluminium, actually. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. All right. Um. So the door has to have a frame, but what I think the frame is, um, you you have to leave. Some space、uh, around the frame,、uh, so you can allow the interlocking of the door edge to the door seal.、Uh, if you make a frame and then you just whack on the sheet, then、uh, you might have to use a different sealing system. All right. So what I've got here,、uh, I've got some pre-cut、uh, aluminium sheet, 1.6 millimeters thick. Uh, they've been pre-cut.、Uh, they have also been pre-routed. I've got some、um, pilot line, I call it,、uh, so it's easier to bend. So what I'm going to do in the first step is to bend all these corners,、uh, as in like a box. So they all go up 90 degree,、uh, and that becomes the sheet of it. One part I've actually forgot to mention about.、Um, Making a door is that you see there is、um, the space that the door is supposed to go in.、Uh, you've got to get the right measurement.、Uh, depends on how you make the door. And in my case, because I'm going to bend the door、uh, to a box,、uh, so I have to account for the, the space that、uh, it's going to bend. So in my case, it's twenty mil. So that twenty mil needs to be accounted for.、Um, so, for example, if you have one one thousand millimeters width of a space in there,、uh, you'll have to add twenty each side, and that's a forty mil excess. That's to be bent. All right,、um, and up up that end and the bottom, you'll also have to allow the twenty millimeters、uh, on each end. So,、um, so that you can, after you bend it, you can still fit in the door perfectly. 
you might have to consider a little bit of excess as well. So apart from that 20 and 20, you might have to allow yourself um, a clearance of maybe five millimeters uh, so that it has a bit of room to play. Um, and I'll show you something as well. Uh, there are different types of hinges. Um, uh, the, the best hinge is called a center flitz. Um, I'll show you in a minute. All right, um, so this one is called center flex. Uh, it's not like a normal hinge, it's not like this um, with a couple of attachments. But that one there, it's actually, um, it, it has the attachment is the full width of the door. Um, and the benefit of this hinge is that it's very durable, it's been tested to whatever dozen or um, uh, there's a really high number of. Um, of I don't know what you call it repetitions that that you can go for is basically it's basically strong very strong that has unlimited um, uh, amount of movements that you can use obviously um, so uh, it's durable and also uh, it stops water from entering and uh, you know the um, the canopy doors as you open it. Uh, you've, you've got water that gets trapped on the door surface and then it sort of goes back to the hinge uh, and as you open what happens is uh, the normal hinges or piano hinges have holes and just allows water to, to, to drip uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the en in the entrance so that's not what you want, you, you want to keep water away um, so that keeps water away and the water just slides on, on top of here uh, and it just gets strained on the side of the door. Um, the, and the trick about this center flex hinge, they're the best stuff, uh, but you will have to allow enough clearance uh, on the upper end of that hole. Uh, so in my case, that center flex is 17 millimeters. Uh, so apart from the 20 and 20 I've, I've talked about, as well as the five millimeters uh, flexibility, I will also have to allow this 17 millimeters, um, so that um, to uh, in, in order to fit the door in perfectly. I'll start the doors by bending the sheet. Uh, in order to do that, as I said previously, I've run a pilot line because I haven't got a industrial grade bender. Uh, that's a homemade bender by some 10 mils angles and some a combination of 10 mils, 3 mils and 5 mils. Um, it's not perfect. If you like to check out the, uh, the video of, of this build, um, I'll put it somewhere up here. So you can uh, do a bit of reference, but uh, mind you, it's not perfect. Um, uh, I failed, but then I improvised the bender a little bit, so it at least bends. Uh, when a line is weakened. Um, and also one thing I've learned about bending is that for things this long, even though it's 1.6 millimeters uh, thick, which is really thin, um, it, I mean, collectively, there are lots of atoms in this piece of metal. Um, and it, will, it is still pretty hard to bend. It's ridiculously strong. I have no idea. But when things that is this small, this wide, uh, essentially it's a strip of aluminium, same thickness, is vulnerable. Um, I haven't even bent it. It will just bend as, as long as I put a die on. Um, so that is the difference between the big and small work piece. So, um, in order to bend a box, you need a die that has that allows you to 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 um, that has enough clearance to to allow you to insert the the size that's already been bent. I'll show you what it means. So I'll I'll firstly do this uh, bend first, and now I'm going to put the die on. Well, one thing for certain is that you have to be very familiar with your own tools. Especially when your tools are not perfect. 
All right, where's my stuff? Got one over here, one over there. Uh, so I've got a pilot line, and that's why I know exactly where this thing is going to bend. All right? And that's a good thing about running a pilot line. Um, in a bender like this, you really want to make sure both sides um, are equally tightened. Uh, because if not, one side will be tight, one side will not be tight. Three, four, five. And I'll do the other side five times. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll just repeat from here five times. And remember not to over tighten, otherwise you can damage your die. So that is exactly where I want it, and I'm going to make this bend. So whoever that owns a bender should have something like this. This is a angle finder, um, a very useful piece of gear uh, if you have to find an angle. So essentially, um, when you turn it on, um, you'll have to find a reference uh, at zero degree, all right? And you can basically zero it, um, and you make the bend and compare from the reference. Things like that. So, um, but this particular one has got a magnetic bottom. So I'm going to stick this here, zero that. All right. And I, uh, I, because I know my bender, this side is gonna be a little bit higher. So that's why I'm going to put this angle finder here um, and bend until it reaches 90. Things like that. All right. So I'm going to make this bend. Uh, this is gonna be fine. Okay. So, whoa, it's really strong. Unbelievable. 90, oh shit, it's not gonna be good. Okay, it didn't work. I'll have to try that again. So what, what I need to do now is just uh, to reposition the piece uh, to the right spot. Uh, and also what happened was the work piece actually moved in as I bend. Uh, and we can correct this by actually clamping the work piece on the bench so that hopefully the same thing won't happen again. And honestly, uh, having some rag on the bench doesn't help because the rags will just move along with the um, with the sheet. But I'll give it a go at another time. Oh, hopefully, it works. Finish this small band using a hammer, uh, and the small tool that I'm going to use is this block of wood. I'm sure the uh, the piece of aluminium is weak enough to be bent, uh, but I guess it's just very um, because what I'm bending is only 20 mil. So uh, anyway, and you you've got to do it very slowly as well, otherwise the um, the whole thing will just be bent on one side and the other side is still straight. Well, hopefully the camera will stand. Not too bad.
I mean, look, it is not a bad band. It is 90 degrees. It's not too bad, hey? But, uh, well, that's what happens when you don't have the best bender in the world, or I should say the worst bender in the world. Next band, my friend, is a bit tricky because um, you see, this was the band that we've just bent, and we're going to bend this side up. So, uh, in order to put the die on top, you've got to have some space to allow this side to go in. Um, and I guess that makes sense to you, uh, otherwise, you won't be able to bend this stuff. Alternatively, you can use something as long as this edge to the other edge um, and you just sort of clamp it down and you do the bend again. Right, so in my case, um, my die has some fingers, so and you just have to find where the finger is and sort of fit it in. Alright, so you see that just fits in to the fingers. Um, and another thing you'll have to make sure is that that finger will have to have uh, enough clearance uh, to swallow the whole edge. Uh, in my case, I because I prepare it, uh, I, I know exactly how uh, the capacity of this finger. So hopefully this edge bends all right, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'll have to break uh, my hammer again because um, this is a longer edge, and and and, I, and my theory. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, my theory about the atoms, that the bigger, the, the, you know, bigger the, the piece, uh, you've got more atom in there, and that's why you'll have to use more force to bend it. Uh, and this is an example. We'll just have to give it a try anyway. Alright, so we'll watch this side. That's uh, zero degree in here. We'll try to bend this up to 90. And sometimes you've got to do it fast. Oh, it didn't work because it, the whole thing just moved. And it's very annoying when it does that. Or maybe alternatively, I'll, I'll just use a hammer. Maybe it can't be done. It is all right, isn't it? So uh, I know you can see some areas that's a little bit warped, but um, it's a very small area, so no one actually really noticed. Uh, and most importantly, that part has been done really, really perfectly. That's a 90 and 90 degree bend, all right? So I'll just fast forward the rest, I'll repeat the, the other two sides with the same method, all right? But um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I, when I get to the last bit. Uh, so I'll, I'll be doing that side first and I'll leave the width um, at last. All right, uh, the next day, suit up rock and roll. Um, so this is the one, two, three, the, the fourth, the fourth bend of this door. 
Uh, the, the trick is bend. Um, why, why do I say that? Because my die doesn't have the two fingers that fits in perfectly um, for the two sides. So the only trick that I can work, uh, that I can think of really, is to cut out a piece with a straight edge uh, that fits right within this edge to this edge. Uh, and then, well luckily I have this long hinge that uh, allows the bend. So what I can only do really is to clamp down this um, piece of wood. Uh, I think it is around 12 mil thick. Uh, I'm not too sure if it is strong enough. I hope it is. Uh, if not, I can always just add some more on top. Um, uh, just give it a bit of strength. Um, and do the bend. That's the only thing I can do really. I'll, I'll give it a go. If not strong enough, I'll put some more scrap wood on top. Uh, and that way, it makes it stronger. Alright, let's get You know, this is actually really, really annoying when it doesn't even bend even one degree. Uh, I mean, look, this is a 10 mil angle, and it can't not be strong enough to bend this 1.6 mil. How, how can this 20 mil uh, clearance be stronger than any any of these? I mean, seriously, this is only 1.6 mil thick, and it, it's really getting um, it's doing it's really doing my head in. Uh, I've got to find a different way to bend this thing. Alright guys, I figured out a way alternatively. Um, well, definitely the bender does not bend this small side, but um, uh, alternatively I can, I can use a hammer. But to, in order to use the hammer, uh, it, it needs to be slightly bent first. So. Um, because the bender can't even bend a few degrees, which really was disappointing, uh, I'm going to use my pliers. I just need a little bit. A little bit that is enough uh, for, for the hammer to actually go in. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So the, the trick is, I mean you can still do it really well, but you'll have to do a few degrees at the same time, uh, at a time. Don't rush the job. Patience is your friend. But I'm afraid that is what I don't really have, so I get angry really quickly. Um, but we'll just have to do it, really. So just a little bit at a time, uh, because you don't really want to, to stretch the aluminium, especially it's so thin. I can really take hours to do this sort of stuff, but I have no choice. Alright, check this out guys, um, this is not a bad job, I know I've used a bit of pliers but the marks were from the pliers, uh, but I'm going to sand it anyway, so it's pretty alright isn't it? Alright, so that's one door done, now I'll just repeat the whole thing for the, the next door. Alright guys, I've been thinking, uh, so this is the, the lead, uh, well, I don't know what it is called, it's a door, the door lead. 
So I started the door lead because I had to work on um, the, the frame inside after that. Uh, so that's basically an RHS uh, that goes on top of the door and that's where the, uh, where the hinge gets attached. Um, and I've got a couple of these angles and they are there just, uh, not only to add on the strength but also for the gas strut. So, um, there, there are three holes in here, so the gas strut can be adjusted at different heights. Um, yes, I know it is a very thin piece of angle, but I'll still do a couple of tags in here, so it just holds in place. And then the, the, the next plan is to build a box in here, uh, a 70 by 140 box uh, in here, tag maybe in this corner of the angles uh, just to add a bit of strength on the door and and the final part of this door build is the door lock uh, so this is um, a really good door lock from uh, I think it is the only door lock that I can buy in Australia that is the, well, the cheapest version of it but it works really well um, from a reputable company uh, I don't want to mention that because I hate them so much um, it has two sides, it can be opened from here, it's locked at the moment, so it can open from here, that bar just goes up um, and the inside basically, it's got a lock in here uh, and the the, um, the handle from the inside over, overrides the whole locking system so whenever you're inside you can always come out, you, you, you won't, won't have to worry about locking uh, yourself in the, in the canopy um, but that would be the most challenging part of this build uh, simply because I haven't done it before and we'll have to cut some holes as well and that's cutting holes is always a risky procedure uh, so this will be the last thing for the canopy uh, so what I'll be doing now um, I, um, I've already done well you see the angles I've already prepared the angles uh, and I'll be doing I'll be bending the box now uh, once I've worked um, on this width that I need um, yeah I'll do the box and I'll weld them together All right guys uh, so after spending an hour or two uh, cutting this out uh, well actually you are standing on the next panel uh, <clears throat> so and as you can see I've also uh, routed three lines that's the band line so it just makes it easier for me to cut really um, for bend not cutting so this is the box section so I'm going to bend these two times uh, and bend this only once and I'll let you know why I only do it once all right um, so hopefully this is not too difficult to bend uh, because I've actually well it is a long bend and that's why I uh, when I run the router I've adjusted the depth a little bit deeper, so it goes deeper, this part is thinner uh, than, than the router lines before. Uh, so hopefully, well let's hope that it doesn't give me too much of a hiccup to bend.
All right, uh, so this is the box section I, um, I mentioned previously. And reason that I've made a box like this instead of the whole thing, um, uh, uh, another piece in here, is because um, it's just not possible to bend. Uh, once it's all fully bent, I can't actually take this out. But anyway, uh, I've found a solution for it. Um, these are all going to be welded together. Um, once they're all welded together, the whole the whole frame just gets glued onto uh, onto the door sheet. So it is going to turn out pretty well. Uh, so all of this is uh, going to strengthen the door, um, and obviously that RHS is just um, allowing the allowing the attachment of the door hinge. Alright, so this is what this is about. Uh, I'm about to put this door lock inside. It is pretty, it's a pretty fancy door lock. Um, so this is the, the exterior, uh, the outside part of the door, uh, the, of the lock, sorry. Uh, I've already taken the, the, the inside handle out uh, because I have to do a measurement uh, and do some stuff anyway. Now, uh, in order to put the door lock in the door, a hole definitely needs to be cut out uh, and the masking tape is just uh, for scratching uh, in the cutting process and I've also spent uh, the whole afternoon making a pair of these um, so this is uh, this, this is the stuff that goes between the inside door handle and outside door handle um, so it, it requires about this much to stop the whole lock from moving around so it gets sandwiched between everything um, and it's a lot of work to do, by the way. So I'll be using a Raobi router. Uh, it's designed for woodwork, but apparently it's quite all right to work on thin aluminium. So, uh, and I, it has honestly been proven its value. Um, it's not recommended, but that's what I'll be doing. It's a very dangerous procedure as well. Uh, that's why I'll be wearing eye protection, ear protection, and a lot of concentration. Um, all right, let's get it done. All right, the hole's been made. Ah, oh, let's have a good seat. Now, uh, the moment, the moment of truth. Let's see if I can put this lock in. And if I can put it in, I'll just, uh, I might as well put it, put the screws up as well. Uh, it's a pretty tricky step, but anyway, I'll, I'll give it a go. So you put this up. Uh, do not do not fully tighten all the way. Otherwise, it's not uh, the force is not evenly distributed. So I'm trying to make it uh, just touching the surface, and then I'll fully tighten all of them diagonally.
Beautiful. So now the door is done. Uh, I mean the lock is done. Alright, so that's how you open it. And the inside there's a handle. There's a lock. And you can still open it from the inside. Alright, so the next step is to glue the frame. Uh, so in order to, to do that, I've already scratched the space I, I, I want to put glue on. Um, and then I'll, I'll just do a quick clean up by using acetone, uh, just to make sure everything is clean. Then uh, squeeze some glue and we're good to go. Leave it overnight and in the morning we'll, we'll just continue, uh, we'll refit the, the hinge, uh, as well as uh, we'll work on uh, the, the gas struts. So hopefully the gas strut is strong enough. Uh, this door is getting really heavy now. Uh, it's not that heavy. I mean, it's around uh, less than 10 kilograms, but hopefully the two gas struts of 100 Newton meter um, strong enough to lift the doors. Alright guys, um, the door is basically done. Uh, we've glued that last glue, glue the frame on last uh, last night. Now uh, I've been working on this uh, center flex this morning. Uh, so what we're going to do now is to put the center flex hinge um, in here. So the way it works is that um, you firstly have to work out the the mount holes in the door first. Because once it's been put on, it makes it extra, extra difficult to start drilling any new holes, especially when you have to hold on to the door. In the same time, <clears throat> uh, well, you have to hold the door in the air, so let's put it this way. So that has to be pre-drilled first uh, on a door, so the door's ready to go on. Now the next step is <clears throat> you put some holes, and I'm, I'm actually going to rivet it um, on the canopy frame directly, so it will stay on. Uh, let's hope it works, hey? Um, I've got one hole drilled. <clears throat> uh, this is going to be quite difficult, quite tricky actually. We get this done. So you see I'm using two drill bits uh, because my um, the size that, that is suitable for this rivet, uh, the, 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 the drill bit that is suitable for this side, hole size is not sharp enough. Uh, and it's just real unfortunate. I, I, I just happen to have some really, really cheap drill bits. Um, but as the size that goes, that is a little bit smaller, is sharper. So I'm going to use it as a pilot hole. All right, here we go. And just rip this on as well. So the center flex actually stays on. Um, and you don't have to worry about the rest of the holes anymore. And of course you have to put more holes and put more rivets. <clears throat> Okay, very good. Yeah, it's funny rivets. All right, so this this thing is on, and, uh, and you'll just have to repeat the whole process along. Uh, you, you pick a number and just keep doing it, really. Yes. 
So, this is door number one. Um, to put it on hand, I think it weighs around 5 to 10 kilograms. But for its size, it's, it feels heavy. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to do it by myself. It just feels a bit wrong, honestly. Um, if I can secure them with the rivets, I'll give it a go. Oh, come on, baby. Go in. Thank you. Alright, so all this has kind of gone in. Uh, mm. Mm. We'll just do them one by one. That is a door. Haha. It goes okay. Ha ha It's a door! <laughs> now I've also welded in some uh, I don't know what you call these brackets. Uh, and I've made a mistake and I put a wrong one underneath there. Uh, and I noticed that it's too low. But mind you, I've, I've actually followed the diagram of uh, the gas strut. Um, I have no idea what, what has gone wrong. The measurements are all correct, uh, but it just couldn't open 90 degree. Uh, maybe the gas strut was maybe the gas strut was wrong. Who knows? Uh, so the next step is to router a hole for the uh, for the door lock bar. Now, so first of all, you'll have to um, find the measurement. From the door up external, um, the um, the outside of the door to the uh, come on, just focus for me um, to the bar. So you need that distance, all right. So take that distance, and then you just put a mark over here, right? And from that mark, that is a starting point. I'll just change the camera angle for you, um, and then you 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 can use this. Um, what do you call that? Dead plate. So you put the dead plate here and just draw that um, rectangle inside and that is actually including the black mark is where I want to remove. Alright, and after that I'm going to use the router to take away this, uh, this area. Alright, using a router is very dangerous, especially when you are not routering uh, things that you are you're meant to router with. Um, so in this case it's aluminium and that is 3 mil thick. Um, so you've got to do it really slowly. Um, or in case of wood you'll have to do it slowly as well. But uh, when doing this with soft metal, uh, such as aluminium, you just have to... Uh, it is possible, but you'll have to take it real slow. Uh, it is effective, it is a, such a good tool. Uh, and by the way, I found oh, the best woodworking tool is a router, in my opinion, anyway. Um, because I, I, I don't use to use it for woodwork, I use it for, for, for metal work. And I just discovered that um, this is such a good tool for aluminium working. 
Uh, anyway, very dangerous procedure, ear protection, eye protection, and you've got to have really, really high concentration, focus, uh, and control your fingers. Uh, otherwise, that spinning router bit can just take away your finger. All right. So I've made this preliminary hole, so you have a quick look. Um, come on, yeah. Uh, it's quite a clean hole. I might have to clean up a little bit more later on, but it's not too bad. Uh, and then I'm, go I'm just going to try to put this um, thing back on and and then have a look at how close the door gets to it. So guys, I'm, I'm trying to work on the seals now. Um, so what I'm going to do is to put something like this, a, a C channel, a very thin piece of C channel, and to put some of these, uh, what are they called? This is a type of door seal. Uh, it's called pinch weld. And that sticks onto the edge, like so. So the idea is, to put one of those, the C opening pointing outwards, and then when it sort of comes down, when it sort of comes down, it, uh, it overlaps with the with the door edge. Uh, but in order to fit this in, I'll have to cut some uh, some nut 45 degree mitre uh, in order to fit this in perfectly. Alright guys, yes, I've already cleaned up um, this interior uh, and I've already put glue on this platform as well so the floor has been stuck onto the, um, the canopy. Now, what I'm going to do is... Oh, hang on, let me just do a quick fix in here. Okay, um, so I've, I've made, as you saw me earlier, I've, I've cut some angles um, these are 16 but no these are actually not angles these are C channels um, a lot of work so it wasn't that easy it wasn't just using miter saw and cut 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 uh, it was actually a custom made sort of thing okay, beautiful so I've just been using this and uh, put some glue on the side all right here we go just yeah I'm not too sure how 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 good this is gonna go but uh <sighs> what well, I'll put this up. Hopefully, it will work. I'm just trying to put this back to, to where I've marked this. Uh, and I guess this side... Here we go guys, that's the door, um, it's been a success, I mean it is a door that works uh, and the seals sort of work as well, uh, we'll probably have to do some testing in following trips uh, once this is done. Uh, obviously there are quite a few things that I have to improvise, uh, I might have to modify 
the, um, the gas truck mounts a little bit so it goes up a little bit higher if desired. Uh, and the gas truck strength might have to go, go up a little bit so it sort of goes up a little bit easier. Uh, and also, uh, I don't know, I think this has been pretty good. Uh, Yeah, something like this. Alright, so that's it for today's episode. Um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you, uh, you picked up a few points uh, from this uh, DIY canopy door. Um, so, stay tuned. Uh, the next will be the, the roof. Um, we'll have to put the gas trucks on the roof. So, the, um, the canopy build will be complete. Alright, thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, press like and notification.